Forgotten Fire opened in October 1st of 2011. Yeah, we originally were hobby home winemakers, my wife and I, and uh, one Christmas we gave away a bunch of wine and uh, folks called us back and said they wanted to buy more. And that was kind of like when the light bulb went off that maybe we have something here that we could really build off of. So uh, when people want to buy your wine, you might as well open up a winery. So we did, uh, October. And our goal was to be a boutique winery, open on the weekends, do about 1,000, 1,200 cases a year. Well, we sold uh, over 800 cases in our first three months. So that's when we decided we'd go to the bank and see what more we could do. And we did an expansion project and we grew to about 3,000 cases the following year. And then we opened another winery in Cribbits in 2014. And uh, so now we're doing about 7,000 cases in, in 2014. We're projecting to do over 10,000 cases uh, now for 2015. The neat thing about Forgotten Fire is it's part of the Peshtigo fire history. So in 1871, um, Peshtigo had the, America's largest fire, and it was also the same day as the Chicago, Great Chicago Fire. So everyone knows about the Great Chicago Fire, but no one knows about us here at Forgotten Fire, hence the name. Uh, we're the Forgotten Fire. And this land all burned during that fire. And uh, when they were doing some excavating, they found some old stumps that were charred and slightly buried, so they figured those probably came from, from the fire. Something to follow with the, the history of, of Petrico fires, we name a lot of our wines after it. Uh, we have a Cab Merlot blend that's called 1871, after the year. Uh, we have Wildfire White, Wildfire Red. Um, we have a Blush Fire, kind of a joke on, on, on Brush Fire. We have uh, Phoenix Rising, and uh, we have a little story on the bottle that talks about how Petrico arose from the fire and and rebuilt itself. Um, just some fun stuff like that to make us part of, of the community. The wines themselves come from um, a bit of preference. I made cranberry wine for one specific, or originally made it for one specific person. My mother-in-law loves cranberry wine, so that's the only reason why I made it originally. And then when we launched it here, it became one of our best sellers. So it kind of made sense. Our fruit mostly comes from uh, Door County. We get our apples and cherries. Marshfield, we get our cranberries. So it's, we try to keep it between the two states as best we can. We uh, are an award-winning winery. We've won uh, international awards from the uh, Finger Lakes International out of New York. Our hot mess wine won a double gold, which was considered best in class. Uh, it's a blend of cherry and red wine. We were uh, winners alongside Lafitte Rothschild, who sells their wine for $285 a bottle. Ours is 15. We're doing a Chardonnay this year for the first time because we've had a lot of requests for it. And then we do a lot of blending. Because we don't grow our own, we have to bring in whatever we can from other vineyards and, 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 and orchards. So we do a lot of blending based on what the harvest is like. If we don't get enough raspberry, we'll try to stretch it out by blending it with a white or a red wine. That's how our hot mess wine came out. We do a little of everything at the wineries. We, we do tours, we try to do events, we do music outside uh, on Saturday afternoons here at Forgotten Fire and then Friday nights at Cribbits um, at the Falling Waters Winery. Uh, we're dabbling with cheese at both of the wineries, something new for us this year. And we've also opened Thunder Mountain Oil House and Specialty Foods. It's uh, uh, two doors down from the Falling Waters Winery. We do uh, balsamic vinegars, uh, flavored olive oils, uh, gourmet cheeses, um, some, some cookware, uh, brie bakers, pots and pans. Uh, sea salts, rubs, specialty foods from within Wisconsin, canned goods, uh, salsas, things like that. Uh, the tanks uh, over here on my left are 1,600 gallons, which gives you about 8,000 bottles per. Uh, we've got a couple smaller ones and a couple larger ones. Um, we can get 11,000 bottles per out of the large ones on the, on the far end there, uh, which leads to quite a bit of production. With us doing fruit and grape wine, we are able to turn over the tanks twice. When the white wine comes out and it's bottled, it's usually time for strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, and we can start making those right away after. So using the tanks twice gives us, it's economical for us and it's space conscious too. Uh, currently we, we have a system, a manual bottling system that does about 200 cases a day. Uh, within the next month or two, we'll be switching to an automated system where uh, only two people need to operate it and we can do uh, between 1,000 and 1,500 cases in a, in a good production day. So that'll, that'll save us a lot of man hours and, and lead to efficiency and help for growth in the future.